Welcome back everyone to the finale episode of Let's Play Rule the Waves as Russia. So it's been my great pleasure to bring you this series, but this will be the last episode, an epilogue really if you will, because we really finished the, the with the ending of the British War as abrupt as it was. Um, the series is going to come to a close here, which makes sense because we're well beyond 1925, the official game end, and we did fight our our battle against the big boss. Every series I like to fight either the US or Great Britain, usually Great Britain, for that last battle. And we've done so, even though the result this time was a little bit more nebulous, a little less clear cut. I'm not really sure if we can call it a victory. I don't think we can call it a outright defeat. So, so the purpose of this episode is actually twofold. First, I want to kind of announce a little bit more about this um, succession series, which has now already started. Episode 1 is available on the Historical Gamers channel. I'll provide a link, probably by annotation and in the game comments, or maybe not in the comments, maybe in the description, both, who knows. So it'll somehow be visible if you look around. Um, I do want to make a cautionary note that um, THG's first video actually had a few recording issues. As you can see, I just record like a fixed part of my background, and then I call it 1020, uh, 1080p, it's really not. But this game, the graphics are obviously not that important, so the rescaling is, as far as I can tell, unnoticeable. If you were to try to watch this in 1440, then actually I'm still not sure you'd see a difference, because we're just basically looking at text. Um, so just a, a note that his first video, he didn't catch the pop-ups, so... Okay, that was a bad example, but the almanac and stuff, you can't view it. And all those things are corrected for his second video and onwards, but just, you know, be a little patient with that, if you would. Um, also, please do go check out that, because that is essentially my series, and, uh, I mean, I'm part of it, so... How do I say this without... I don't know, it's a, I'm really excited about that Succession series, but I'm also... I mean, first of all, because the the Succession series, whoa, that's a lot of S's. Um, it was uh, an idea I thought up like several months ago, and I I had been doing this series on Russia. I think it was the very beginning when it came to mind. Um, and I've seen Succession series be very successful. My gosh, a lot of S's <laughs> in other uh, games. Most notably for me, there was one really. This one was hilarious, and of course the quality of the people talking about a succession series when they do a AAR, or in this case they were just reporting about their um, what happened during each save game. This was in Dwarf Fortress, which is a game which lends itself well to storytelling um, by itself, but uh, this succession series had uh, a bunch of elephants all dying with an invasion of the undead lava that i mean it was just a hilarious read which of course is partly because it was a good author but partly because the succession series set up this really funny event okay anyway um so i think that rule the waves is really really caters itself to uh such a series that it would be Really easy to fit it in, just have one director take over after such amount of years. We're going to do six years, just so uh, we can get... It might be a little bit on the short side, I think. Um, you probably wouldn't want to do anything less than five. But we're trying to each get two turns in, so that means we're slated to end in 1936. Um, the order of play will be the historical game of first, then I'll be second, and then XTRG. Um, I won't make this the announcement video, you've probably already seen it on my channel, but um, this is my chance to really kind of talk about it a little more because uh, in the announcement video we tried to keep it short and uh, the historical gamer is very eloquent. I tried to defer to him to let him talk a little bit more. <laughs> so what I wanted to say about it is what I'm excited about because it's my brainchild, but also this is my first collaboration. I, I've always thought of my channel as just an opportunity to collaborate with people as well. Um, the first person, a personal friend of mine, I keep bugging him that we should do a collaboration together. Our first attempt was on Project Zomboy, but it really didn't pan out. Okay, well let me not ramble on too long. So there's my pitch for the Succession series. 
Uh, I'll leave a link somehow so you can access the episode one at the Historical Gamers channel. Actually, what you can do even easier is just go to my playlist. I am going to be keeping, as should all three of us, XTRG, THG, and I, I'm going to be keeping a playlist which includes all the videos. So right now I already have the first video um, from THG's channel in there. And you can just access it through that. It, click on it, it'll take you over to you know his video, which is perfect. And that's how the playlist should be set up, so that a person watching in the future, at least, can just start with um, episode one, and then work all the way down through each different person's channel, staying on the same playlist. Okay, so fair enough. That being said, this is our concluding video. That was a lot of talking. I probably should have been advancing in the background, but I didn't, so I apologize about that. But I did already advance about a year and a half. It was 1931. I don't remember what month when we ended. And now we're just going to take it through to try to engage in some kind of funny war. And I paused it here because there was a lot of upgrades and stuff. I, I started, I mean, if you're wondering why this video is so late, it's because I've recorded it like five times, which is usually only the case with my tutorial videos. But for this one, I recorded a few times. It went too long. I rambled a little bit. I didn't like the quality of the video. Um, I announced to, well, one time I forgot to announce about the succession series, which probably would have been fine, but the quality wasn't great anyway. So I decided after I saw that uh, the video lengths were all really too long that I probably need to cut the first like 15 minutes of me just trying to get into war. And by I saved it at some point. I had to restart two or three times and I saved it so that now we're right near war with France, which would be very appropriate considering that's the nation we're going to play. And this could be war. It is. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> Very good timing. We're going to decline enemy, uh, the raid on enemy shipping. Although this would involve, no, nope, this would only involve battle cruisers. But actually, that's kind of what I want. I'm going to decline it. Okay, they're trying to get me involved with this. They, <laughs> they really want that. Let's decline. Oh my gosh. Declining this gives... 325 victory points. You know what? It's a little bit silly because this is actually just a light cruiser battle. Okay, I'm going to decline it because we don't really care about victory points. All I want to do is, I, I said this already, I just want to use this time to explore how our battle cruisers perform because we didn't really get a chance to view the Ishmael class. And I didn't retire officially, resign officially, so for all these reasons, we'll do this one last video, right? Um, and I can kind of start talking about, oh, okay, yeah, I did build some motor boat, uh, mo motor torpedo boat squadrons in the Baltic States. I also decided to build, okay, let's see, we did sink six French submarines, that's good. Okay, this is it, fleet battle, North Sea, right in the middle, this is perfect. So I did build some turrets, there's uh, apparently two turret options available to you. You have a turret, you have coastal batteries, and then you have coastal batteries in turrets. I'm not really sure what the difference is. And let's see, what time is it? Okay, it's three o'clock in the morning, so we have quite a while to go before it's night or daytime, which means I am going to enable torpedo launching right away. Now, I think some people were saying that their ship never went in. Was it the Anton Kopchenko that never viewed action? Or was it, oh God, I think it's the Gary might also be one and the Gary is not with us, unfortunately. Oh, no, there the Gary is, okay. So maybe the few ships that claim that they never saw action are actually in this, which would be really good. So the visibility is absolutely terrible. Hopefully our new torpedo boats, our new torpedo destroyers serve their purpose well. That's one of the things that I actually regretted the most, was that we didn't build enough. Like looking back on this series, it's been something I've thought about, I've given a fair amount of thought to. Why did we do so poorly in this series compared to previous ones? And one is just the difficulty of, of Russia. I think it's a fantastic series for veterans to play because it will you'll be pulling your hair out like me um, throughout all of it. So let's get these guys to go to AI control, although 
I don't really... No, not you. You. Squad Max. We'll try to save these three, but these guys are just in it. I don't really see any way. So we'll try to turn these guys really quick out of the way. But the Blinson and Anton Kopchenko, I, I just feel like they're doomed. <laughs> I want to almost go head on to try to avoid torpedoes, but at some point going head on becomes, as you get up next to them, you're no longer going head on, you're now um, next to them, parallel to them, and that's, that's not good. <laughs> then they're firing broadside torpedoes at you all over again. So maybe I'll just do a, a slight turn to starboard. Um, for these ships, I don't, even though it's really light, I mean, no, actually, it's so dark I was going to leave them, I was going to say it's a bad thing for me to take them off screen, but you know what, I am going to leave them on screen, I'm just going to put them to AI because I don't, ah, oh, this is a bummer, I don't want these guys to be under AI control though. So let's have the Tortuga take lead. Since she has the fastest speed, these guys are limited by the Repvizon, so they can only go 19. I don't want them to go that fast. We'll just say 17 as the speed for everyone. And these guys look like they are limited to 20, which is my Tesserovich max. So there, without further ado, let's see how our battle cruisers perform. And then I'll finish talking about this series itself. Okay. Um, can we get you guys to torpedo? Now, this is the challenge. We already launched some one torpedo. Uh, yeah, I feel like we're committed. We're just going to go right through the middle now. Oh, God. And I don't see a lot of big ships, which means this is a really terrible, 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 terrible situation. But at least we hopefully will fire some shots and get some kills. Good luck, gentlemen. <laughs> I salute you in your dying breath. <laughs> There's the Blinson getting hit. Oh dear. So I think what I've actually done is turn off a lot of the messages. I don't pause on people be being hit anymore. I guess we can pause on capital ship hits. Um, I don't want to pause on identification. I don't need to give open fire messages. So yeah, we'll just do this. I live in regret that we are <laughs> going right through them. Oh, we need to go down here. This is where the... Well, Blinson's already taken two. Good job, Blinson. A real torpedo sponge. We didn't launch at the battle cruisers. Okay, there. Anchon Kochenko is now also reeling. It looks like we're getting fired at by somebody. This one. And they're actually hitting, which is... You know, I think we're I was going to try to peel us back away, I mean back onto this guy. Yeah, actually I'm still going to do that. Yeah, but the Blinson is just getting demolished by this ship. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, the Blinson is probably not going to last very long. I'm going to try to bring our this group down. They look like they're headed down this way anyway. And now if we can get a broadside off or something, maybe we can make it up a little bit. All we're doing is hitting destroyers, which is less than ideal. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we are actually hitting with only 5-inch guns. Okay, so a few 16-inch guns going in. Already destroyed a turret. Let's see what we're up against here. 38,000 tons, so right in line with our ships, which are basically exactly the same tonnage. So it's okay if we lose the Blinson, as long as we can take the Brui. I don't know how to pronounce. It's the one real negative about this upcoming French succession campaign that I don't speak French. I don't pronounce French very well. Okay. So I think we should stay on their tail. Where are you guys? You guys are coming in hot. That's good. So some of these hits are not... Yeah, so we have some... Oh, so now it's the Anton Kopchenko who's taken the blows. 
Well, the good news is the brewery, I'm just gonna call it the brewery because I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's probably the brew. She's taken some damage. She's only firing one turret at us. And she's about to run head into our three battlecruiser fleet. So for all these reasons, I, I hope that we can actually pull out some kind of victory. Another 16 inch hit. Oh, this is by Spara, so we're starting to engage. Very good. All the while, we have these ships going off on some weird adventure, because I wasn't paying attention to them. Ah, oh, that's the screen. Good God, where are these guys? Okay, boy keeps sinking. Just get the Anton Kupchenko out of here. And you know what? To be honest, the Blinson, for all the damage she's taken, is doing really, really good. Okay, can we get you control back? Very good. Oh, the brute. Actually, this is fantastic. We need to turn hard so we can get those torpedoes in. Yeah, I think we're going to end up winning this one. We can maybe detach the Blinson to get her out of here. Oh gosh, it's gotten even worse. We now have mist everywhere. <laughs> it's like a mythical engagement. Um, jeez. Uh, I have to sneeze. Hold on one sec. <coughs> Apologize about that. So well, the Tortuga is going to be lining up really nicely to lead this pack in, but it does look like we're going to sink this one and get out with with the Blinson in, intact. Wow. Sparrow just fired 10 and hit five, five, 14 times. I don't know how you hit 14 times with 10 guns, but every single, every single gun on her ship is, is destroyed or disabled. All but one destroyed. Well, that's exactly what I was hoping for. So now we just gotta escort these guys out of here. We're going to leave a lot of our destroyers in the dust. There it is. Somebody launched torpedoes appropriately. We will disengage our torpedo launching because I think that that ship is sinking. And I th let's see. I, I guess that this is a pretty darn good ship, having been hit so many times. And just trucking through. 15 heavy hits, 2 torpedo hits. Pretty good. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm pleasant, pleasantly surprised by the performance of that ship. Okay, let's get these guys to not be a screen anymore. Let's get them just to be support. Can you switch over to linehead? Very good. Just get out of the way. It's really frustrating to see you just <laughs> all up in our business. Just need to get them close enough so I can manually control them. There it is. Very good. So it goes to squad max and on your exact current course. So what I would like to do is maybe kind of peel off, regroup. Good. Um, no more torpedoes needed as I already indicated. Yep. Well, she's a goner for sure. <laughs> every, sh every turret now destroyed. How are we doing up here? Probably doing okay. Uh, okay, we are forming up a nice battle line, but the problem is, as we already know, that we don't really want to go in point blank range, especially with our Cesarevichs, which I think only have two per torpedo defense three. I don't think defense four was available at the time. Now, when I detach the Blinson, it'll be a mystery to me where she goes. And sometimes I'm pretty sure that she doesn't go in the direction we want. It's probably the right thing to do still, because we've used up pretty much all of her, her torpedo bulge. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, actually, still over there. Oh, okay. Visibility, no. Just the mist cleared up, but the visibility is still bad. We are still launching torpedoes. I wish that wasn't the case. 
So let's see what happens if we de detach the Blinson. I think the Anton Kripchenko, how many has she taken? She's taken one torpedo hit, but well, we'll roll the dice a little bit with her. What's your max speed? 25, okay, let's go 24 then. Uh, what I imagine is gonna happen is Blinson will reattach, even though that's not what I want. And it looks like I'm gonna have to babysit. Okay, what's your heading? 53. Come on. There it is, 53. So let's babysit the Ishmael so we can get her over. Oh god, we have to babysit these guys a little better. I didn't want to have to do all this because I was hoping we, this engagement would be faster and we're already 20 minutes in. So let's try to make this a little bit quicker. Okay, now this mess is still a mess, truly a mess. But it looks like, oh god, see this is what I was talking about. The Blinson is not going at all in the direction I want her to go. Where the, is it? Like in what world does detaching to go to the nearest home port take you to the enemy port? I really ought to ask about this on the forums. Although I haven't always been getting good answers about stuff, but it seems a little, very legitimate complaint that when you detach people, they don't go where you want. I'm actually just going to suck the Blinson back in, and I'll just make... Um, I mean, we'll have to do something. See, what the hell is she going to do? Okay, and you are still a little too far away to reattach. Aha! Well, the interesting thing, the very cool thing, is we are actually getting scouting information from our dying ship. Seems also to be a bit of a, of an impossibility, but we'll take it. <laughs> Just a little bit more, and we should have the Ishmael. Ismail, there she is. Let's get the Blinson to reattach. There she goes, she reattached. Seems to be like the only way to get things done. But unfortunately, this is the head formation. So we actually have to stay close enough so that the spare and everyone else can function. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll get some good eyes on their fleet for... I mean, mind you, we could just end the battle now, but this is not about the score. This is really just trying to test out our ships. Get these guys to go 20. Let's head this way. If we form a massive battle line, I won't be as disappointed if we take a few hits. We are not forming a massive battle line yet, but that's okay. We'll see if we can get that all squared away. That looks good. Okay, so let's. How do we deal with this, Ishmael? Tuck in behind Tortuga because the flagship, I shall lead the way. And we'll go into battle line, which is the perfect way to get yourself killed in poor visibility with torpedoes flying everywhere. But nonetheless, it is what we will, it's what we're going to do. No, 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 no. All right, we are managing to start forming up this battle line, which is nice to see. And we do have eyes on their battle fleet is heading this way. Watch out for their escorts. So we might need to shift a little bit. We can actually form like a massive battle. I'd rather do a double line. Okay, here we go. Their destroyers are in the area, so we do need to watch out for that.
How much longer do we have to wait for nighttime to end? Only about an hour. Right? Well, it looks like maybe more than that. What day? It's, uh, yeah, it's January, so. A little bit longer than we uh, would hope otherwise. It's going to be nighttime for a while. Although I do see a ship stopped here. We might as well run right into them. Which will announce our presence as well. Okay, we have two ships here, but you know what? That's fine. We'll just do a double, a triple column. This formation is not anything you're going to find in the textbooks. <laughs> okay, here's our unidentified ship. <laughs> I just want to run past them. Now we've got to do, I think, 18, because there are people who can't go faster than 18. Well, there's 19, but I, I always like to have one knot as like emergency speed if I need it. So just go ahead and tuck in there and sink it, Tortuga. Me. Oh, just kidding. She's now sunk. What in good God, what in heaven's name is going on here? Like I said, this uh, trying to get all these ships to go in the same direction always been like herding cats. And what is this? What are these guys doing? You know what? Go to um, screen. I want you to go to screen mode because you're just too far behind to be useful to me. Oh, Blinson is still taking damage? Uh, come on, why don't you control that flooding after your four torpedoes or whatever it was? And we can actually slow down to 19 with the battle cruisers. Obviously not good. We want to be able to use their speed typically, but that's okay. Okay, so let's just get everyone going the same course, 265, whoops, had it. Ugh. Everyone go 265 so I can just let go and I won't have to worry about actually piloting anybody. We can just go as long as we want in one direction. You know, that may be the last of this battle. I mean, if we get very unlucky, or well, that's how I would interpret it, we might not see anybody else. We also just make sure our speeds are right. 18, 18, 18, 18. This one should be 19. They are, and they are 19. Good. Looks good to me. Okay, so this series, I, I, okay, well, first of all, I guess the battle cruisers look like, what the hell? It's the best damn mines I've ever seen. Let's get these guys to be a screen for Tortuga, good. Go do your thing, which means go up to the front. Okay, good. And that's my ship. How dare they? I think it's probably a submarine or a mine. Okay, we just avoided more torpedoes. But our destroyers didn't see it, so it's confusing. Now we have our destroyers in front. That's good. And everyone is moving the same. This is actually kind of fun. <laughs> you know, it's so much easier to play this game when the AI like correctly moves itself into position, which we've got done. And if there was an option to multiple select fleets and get them all to do the same course, that might exist in the game, but I don't know how to do it. I mean, that would just make things a lot easier. Now let's see where their fleet is. Maybe invisible. Are we pausing on spotting a ship? Uh, let's do pause on new sighting. But that might be the end of this one, which is fine. At least we had one chance to look at the battle cruisers go. I could also try to put the battle cruisers on raiding, and then we might encounter the French fleet just because we'd be raiding. But I don't want to separate us now. We should come out ahead in this battle. I mean, again, that doesn't matter. This is the end, whatever. So. Ultra fast. We're gonna run to the English island. Uh, 
Blinson's heading that way. Poor Blinson. All by hips. <laughs> Gosh. So I guess that 15 damage, it just never controlled their flooding. And we actually lost him. All by himself. I don't want to be. Okay, so it ended up being a French major victory. I guess that's because our chip is 4,000 more points. And they did more damage to our other ships. Eh, fine. Fair enough. Like I said, I was never too concerned about this battle. I just wanted to see how our battle cruisers do. So what we'll do is actually we'll be a little bit cheeky about this. I'll see if I can encourage a... Um, we are blockaded too. I'll see if I can encourage a one-on-one -on -one engagement with battle cruisers this way. Otherwise, I'm not going to fight the next one. Perfect. Fight the battle. Perfect. So it worked. We got what we wanted, a one-on-one -on -one engagement um, with the Rimnik, which is not a name I think anybody chose. It's uh, some kind of name. Not one I'm familiar with. Okay, so this will be fun. I'm actually really, this is cool. It makes me really happy. Do we have better visibility? Mm, I guess so. They're already in torpedo range, so squad max. Wind on our side, due east is our course. Let's see, she's heading due north, right into our guns, so we'll shift north a little bit. supposed to be a light cruiser. I kind of doubt that that's the case. Nope, it actually is correct. We already got one hit with our 16 inch guns. I'm actually going to head head on. It's either going to be head on away or towards because I want to avoid torpedoes. There's another hit. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull this way. It's just a destroyer. Oh god. We already hit this destroyer twice with 16 inch guns. How is it, how is it still like even close to, <laughs> to surviving? All right, this is the ideal situation. We're probably out of there. Oh my God, another 16 inch hit. That's just, I feel bad for the poor guy. So that should be the end for her. Wow, that is a really surprising battle. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Maybe it's a sign. Um, we'll try raiding. Just maybe we can get lucky with one more, but. Okay, whatever. Decline, decline. Two, no, nope. One more time. Okay, here's the Japanese new light cruiser. Uh, this is one of the things I want to talk about, how we didn't have a light cruiser, and I think that that really cost us. Decline. There we go. We'll fight this one. The Ismail, another. The namesake of our class, so that seems appropriate. Okay, once again. We, how do we get our wind direction? We gotta go squad max. I think we just stay on course. Okay, they gave us the wind immediately. We wanna try to fire at them with our full broadside as quickly as possible. It is happening. And now I don't want to move from here, so we'll let our course stabilize. This is only 21,000, but this will be at least something we can benchmark our ship against. Okay, one hit already. That's very good. That's about two minutes after identifying it. Um, we might as well just try to launch torpedoes, because I'm not sure how long they're going to survive for. We are launching 16-inch shells, quality one. Pretty darn good ones. And I think we'll just run this. I think that they're already trying to retreat. Wow, they are... We just decimated this ship. So I would say that if this is a nice trial, um, it was a very successful one. So as far as battle cruisers go, Ismail looks like a pretty decent one, and I, I'm very impressed with how many. Wow, that was so quick. How that was 40 minutes to sink a battle cruiser. 
Well, I mean, HMS Hood took a little bit less than that, but... <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's going to call this series to a close. We had our fun. We did a couple, one more fleet battle. Two chances to look at the battle cruiser, the new Ismail. Um, looks like she's good against destroyers, and she's good against battle cruisers, so... We didn't get a fair, like, almost even on tonnage ship to fight, but I don't think we're going to, and I don't want to, I don't want this video to prattle on for too long. So concluding thoughts for my theory, uh, series. Uh, yes, Russia is very challenging, as I was mentioning, and the failures in this campaign, things that I would correct next time were, I don't, okay, so first of all, I also looked at this off camera. I was really trying to, between the last episode and this one, knowing the series was coming to an end, I was trying to do some serious thinking. Like, what is it that caused us to do well or not do well? In my opinion, there's some kind of weirdness about the budget. We're at 671, now we're at war. Germany is not at war and they're at 788. Okay, France is at war, so this would be this is apples to apples. 646 versus 671. So let's just compare um, France and I. They have six more dreadnoughts, with three more being built. And they have eight more battle cruisers, where we have two more being built. You can see the total tonnages here are just ridiculous. 650 to 270. 485 to 280. Our budgets are the same. Where does this extra budget come from? Well, look, you could say this, but these ships cost like nothing. These are about one third of our battle cruisers. So if you want, we can translate this into four additional battle cruisers. That gives us nine with two more being built. So 11 to 13, we're still behind. If I translate these into these battle cruisers at Three to one, because that's the maintenance cost translation, more or less. It's actually um, slightly less than three to one. <laughs> we can get uh, where I'm. I'm skimping a little bit. I'm cheating us. I'm giving us the benefit of the doubt, really, and we're still way behind. We're definitely not paying any for heavy cruisers. Neither are they. We have about the same light cruisers, but remember, our light cruisers are really old. Um, and they have forty dreadnoughts. Or sorry, destroyers to our. 10, they also have an AMC. Okay, you might say that this is where some of the money goes, but just to remind you, those ships cost only 7,500 per, so they're extremely cheap. Having even 40 of these is basically like maybe, having the, the extra 30, I should say, is essentially like one battle cruiser of difference. So I'm a little baffled where our budget is actually going to. Could it be that France is just neglecting research? I mean, I doubt it, because they have well-researched ships. They also, I wanted to highlight that they have like a ton of submarines. 43, and we've already sank some. 22 coastal batteries to our seven. So I'm not, I'm just, I'm not sure where, where the extra money of ours is going. Is it because we have high intel? Like if we go to none, how much does it save us? I mean, it's true that we have room in our budget for probably another three battle cruisers, but how much of a difference does this make? So if I go to max, this is, I mean, a million. Maxing intelligence is only still like a million. So it can't be that big of a difference. I really don't know. But anyways, the thing I want to talk about beyond the budget is the areas so that was one of the things I wasn't sure how to deal with was that budget issue I, I just point out but the things I think I can improve upon are getting light cruisers that are up to date I would also next time scrap our old battleships the pre-war battleships I would scrap these they did serve us well only one time when we invaded um, I think it was a German or maybe it was a French colony no, I think it was a German colony in Northeast Asia and we took it that was nice, but other than that, they didn't do anything. And I would prefer to have like a treaty, a strategic projection type um, ship. Basically, if we just made like a very simple dreadnought, let's just suggest something that's gonna do something preposterous. I'm going to 
drop this down to like, let's say 16,000 or so. Um, we can do short range because all it needs to do is project fire. Speed, you know what? It would be interesting to make this thing. No, it just needs to be fast enough to get away from dreadnoughts. So let's say a 23. Priority normal, that's fine. It does not need much. It, if it comes up against anything but a, a heavy cruiser, it's going to sink. I mean, heavy cruiser or less. So we do something like this. Uh, two. Conning tower, you know. I'm, I'm just going to wing some stuff here. I'm not going to do a very good job of min-maxing exactly, but... Something like this. Good torpedo defense, I think, is still important, but let's drop this. I know that there's a big jump between 3 and 2. Um, we take this down to 12-inch guns even. Maybe even, like, 11-inch guns. I like this 3223 configuration. And look at this. We're already, we're already fine. We can get 120 rounds. We get 10 5-inch guns per side. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, I can even add torpedoes to this. Since it doesn't go over 25, we might as well just add two more submerged mounts. There. Okay, we're a little bit over. We should drop the ammo down. One, two, boom. So there it is. This is a kind of a strategic projection ship. I don't think I... And uh, let's see, what does this... Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, that's true. I do need to do that. Save. I just want to see how much this ship's maintenance costs. 275 which is, by golly, cheaper than my Astafi. And I guarantee you that ship could take on the Astafi. So we, we see that this is what I should have done. I, sh I definitely should have gotten rid of these. And then like cruisers, I, I started to talk about this. We got hit by a lot of torpedoes in the last engagements with the British. I think part of the problem is I didn't have enough light cruisers to stop their destroyers from threatening us. And the last thing, which I think is very obvious, um, especially seeing how well these Boikis have performed, was I myself didn't have enough to, um, torpedo destroyers. So those are the, that's my own analysis of the of the series. And uh, I, I still had a lot of fun, but just I like to reflect back. And if you have any ideas where we could have done better, by all means, leave them. And that's the last thing I'll talk about is just um, first of all, I greatly appreciate everyone who actually stayed through this series <laughs> a 40 part series you know these are not short <laughs> who makes it all the way to the end it's a, it's really um it, it's impressive to me it's a it's very flattering but if you are one of those one of the few with the proud whatever and you made it this far uh, i really do appreciate the comments i really do pay them a lot of heed the people who comment on the last video in this series um, it always gets a little bit of special attention in my head. I, you know, anybody can come in on the first video, decide it's not for them, and then leave. And you know, it's fine. I, I, I read all the comments. I basically respond to almost every comment. I intend to at least. If I didn't, it's um, actually probably somehow the alert didn't go off. It's happened a few times. But, but for the people who have actually stayed with me, like there's a few names i i could just put i mean a lot of these people who are, are their ships uh, sabo of course martin long time viewer it, when these viewers leave comments i just pay extra special attention so uh, the, for example my um, atlantic fleet campaign series whatever was based on a suggestion in the last video of one of my rule the wave series and what a great suggestion it was so so that's my way of saying that you guys have the floor and the comments i'll take very seriously so feel free to leave any suggestions, recommendations, or any kind of comments you'd like uh, in this video, um, and I'll, I'll read them. And that's it for me then. So it's been a really fun time, and I won't be doing a, a series in parallel with the Succession series. That question was asked, I think, Incompetent Idiot, and that, that was a good question, but I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I will recharge and be fresh for Ruled Waves when my turn is uh, it's my turn for the succession for France. And then we still have another campaign as Japan to follow after that. That'll probably be another solo campaign. Maybe I'll do the very tech 
which is a, an interesting new dynamic they've added to the game. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see when the time comes. All right, and that's it. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. And I'll catch you guys in another video, hopefully sometime soon.